Hey, good morning. I'm just stopping by to let you know that I did a bit of voice acting on Twitter. And people seem to like it. So I've compiled everything I've done so far, and I've shoved it into a poorly edited video here for you to enjoy. If you have any pointers for me, any advice, let me know down in the comments. And hey, if you like this, I will definitely, definitely do more. But in exchange, I'm going to need you to hit that big red subscribe button. Since again, only 2.1% of my viewers are subscribed right now. Oh, and if you hear about any paid projects floating around, or if you would like me to lend my voice to a project of your own, please, for the love of God, let me know. I'm not picky. So, without further ado, please enjoy. Jameson probably hates me now more than ever because I haven't done any work for him as Peter Parker lately. Betty's angry at me, and as per usual, I can't think of any way to explain. Is this my fate? Am I destined to go through life as a professional fall guy? Why must I be a costumed, super-powered sad sack? Especially when the Torch, who is no better than I in any respect, gets all the praise, all the glory, and even the girl. For him, life is just one big happy ending. Homemade pinolata from scratch, you pig. Look at you. Chowing down on massacres out there, massacring people. Eating all those carbs and dessert. Forget my reputation. When I get my body back, I'll have to work off an Otto Octavia sized gut. My patrol app? One of my spider bots must have spotted. <sighs> yes! There you are. You pilfering parasite! What gives you the right to feast on the fruits of another man's genius? Oh dear, here we go. Doc, calm down. Remember, this is cardiac. He may be a vigilante. Hands up. I'm giving you to the count of three before things get decidedly unpleasant. One. Oh, this is not good. Two. Ock, no. Don't go all psycho Looney Tunes on me. Three. There's nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. Isn't there? I can stop it. I can put my life back the way it was. Make my life mine again. Ben won't have to die because of me. But how many other people will die because I wasn't there to save them? I can't. God help me, I'm sorry, Ben. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't! This was actually, this whole scene, I was going to have this as my demo reel, but then I, uh, I, I lost my nerve and I couldn't do it, but... I don't know, I went for it, and I think it, I think it went, turned out well. Thank you for sending this in. I love this moment. This is one of my favorite moments. I can hear the screams starting again, even as I hang up the phone. And I know it's him. Drawing me out again. And I think, am I that predictable? I'm tired. I've been fighting this guy for nearly 12 hours straight. I haven't had anything to eat or drink. And he's not even tired. But I am. I'm hurt, and I'm tired, and I want to go home, and I want to eat, and sleep, and I don't want to be here, and I think, can I let this one go? Can I let it be someone else's problem, just for a minute, so I can rest? No, I can't. But I wish I could. God, but I wish I could. I feel like I'm still learning so much from Uncle Ben. All the lessons he taught in life, as well as what he taught me in death. His values are the gift he left me. My values. One of which is not to make promises you can't keep, and to honor the promises you make. So here I am, rededicating myself to that pledge, one I've done poorly by until now. I give my word. Take this vow. I promise. I'll take care of Gwen. Thank you, Captain Stacy, for everything. For being a friend of Spider-Man, for believing in him, in me, when no one else did. I feel like I'm still learning so much from Uncle Ben. All the lessons he taught in life, as well as what he taught me in death. His values are the gift he left me. My values. One of which is not to make promises you can't keep, and to honor the promises you make. So here I am, rededicating myself to that pledge. One I've done poorly by until now. I give my word. Take this vow. I promise. I'll take care of Gwen. 
Thank you, Captain Stacy, for everything, for being a friend of Spider-Man, for believing in him, in me, when no one else did. I'm sorry? What do I think of Spider-Man? Uh, I feel like I have a conflict of interest, I guess. I actually used to take pictures of him for a newspaper. He kind of helped me pay my rent for years. Got to eventually repay him by hiring to be my, well, my bodyguard, but still. I think Spider-Man is... He's a good guy, mostly. He tries to do the right thing, and, you know, hopefully people see that. But he's also... He's human. He makes mistakes. He, he can't save everyone. So when I think of Spider-Man, I, I guess I, I think of the weight of that. That he keeps going, despite the failures, knowing, hoping, ultimately, that he's helping people. He's been doing this for a long time, but still, when I think of Spider-Man, I think, no matter what, he's never going to stop trying. You are so fat, that when you cut yourself shaving, marshmallow fluff comes out. No? Okay, how about this one? You are so fat, that your high school yearbook photo was taken from a helicopter. Ooh, tough room. Okay, how about this? You're so fat, that when you get on a scale, it says one at a time. My god, Ultimate Spider-Man was such a little jerk. You know, I'm usually in bed by now. Snug as a bug, or spider. Tighter than a spider? No, that, that doesn't really... For the last time. What are we doing here? You've been watching the sun rise for almost an hour. Well, I've been doing mental paperwork on your new charge of kidnapping. Oh, please. You wasted my time with a fake mugging, shot a net at me, and pointed guns. This is nothing. Besides, you're not a kid. This is a man-napping. It's all jokes, isn't it? You think you're above all this? You and your pals? Above the law? You know what? Yeah, I kinda do. Happy now? What kind of laws are there about a guy who can throw cars and jump over buildings and save thousands of people, but needs to wear a mask to keep his loved ones safe? This whole deal? There's no rule book. Look, I get it. You swore an oath. Well, so did I. So did all of us. And sometimes we mess up, like your previous punching bag daredevil. But guess what? A guy killed my uncle. A guy killed him right in my own home. And I went after him. I went to kill him. And I could have. I had him. And... And no one would have ever known. Just me. But I didn't. I didn't do it. And for all the stupid stuff I've done and said, I know who I am. Because at that moment, right then, I did the right thing. I'm a big fan of yours, you know that. And I hate this fat tub of lard with every fiber of my being. And I'm telling you, if you do this, it's over. You can't take it back. Please. I'm leaving. What? Why? Please, don't pretend you're not relieved. Let's face it. With May back and me out of your life, you have a real shot at happiness. For the first time in... Well, maybe it's the first time ever. But how can you leave after what the Jackal told us? We both have to face the possibility that... That I might be the real one. And you might be the clone. Or that we might both be clones. You don't believe that any more than I do, Peter. All the Jackal wanted was to mess with our minds, hurt us more than he already has. We both know the truth. You're the real Peter Parker, and I'm... I don't know what I am. Okay, so it took me, like, forever, but I finally figured out what this tingling in the back of my neck is. I've been getting the tingling off and on since I got bit by the spider that turned me into the cutest superhero in this tri-state area. But I wasn't putting two and two together until now. So, mental note, the tingle means something bad is about to happen. The tingle means I am in trouble. And of course, the tingle is happening right now. Can I help you? 
This can't be. It can't be. I shouldn't be here. I... I'm looking at me at 17. As the irradiated spider falls towards my hand. I'm looking at me. Older. Much older. And somehow I know that this is the end. This is my last stand. My beginning. And my end. I can stop this. I can hit that spider from here with a web. Deflect it. And I never have to live like this. I never have to accept these powers. Never have to endure the things I've endured. I never have to make the mistake that killed Uncle Ben. I can step in. Save my future self from what's coming. Buy a little time to find out what's going on. And what to do next. I'm lost in time. Caught between what was, what is, and what may be. Caught between moments. Caught between possibilities. With the potential to change it all. Behind me is New York, and the Mindless Ones, and Dormammu, and the death of every superhero in the superhero phone book unless I can get back there. What do I do? Where do I go? And most important, what do I dare do? I always knew that sooner or later, I would lose. It's math, you see. Statistics. No one wins forever. No one. The only thing that matters is how you face it when the cards don't come up your way. I'm not afraid. I'm tired, but I'm not afraid. So just so you know, I won't go down easy. And this I swear to you, I will not go down alone. I always knew that sooner or later, I'd lose. It's math, you see. Statistics. No one wins forever. No one. The only thing that matters is how you face it when the cards don't come up your way. I'm not afraid. I'm tired, but I'm not afraid. Hey, just so you know, I won't go down easy. And this I swear to you, I will not go down alone. You look like someone who could use a breakfast burrito. This is New York. It's always time for breakfast. Can I tell you about Gwen? I've been thinking a lot about her today. She was the smartest, weirdest girl in the world. Wore lots of headbands and raincoats, but it worked for her. She was great. And she died. She died because of me. I sometimes try to ignore it, but the honest truth is, if I wasn't Spider-Man, Gwen would be alive today. I bring that up because I know a thing or two about guilt. I know what you're feeling. And I want you to know he wasn't right. All you do is fight. He was wrong about that. I know because the other honest truth is that if I wasn't Spider-Man, a lot of people wouldn't be alive today. We're not just our failures. As much as they hurt, we learn from them. And then we go out there and do our best to make up for them. Even though we never will. We save people. We save as many as we can to make up for the ones we couldn't. That's all we do. I'm rambling, aren't I? More than usual, I mean. Sorry, not many of us have vehicles, you know. It's not like in the movies. What can I say? I'm impressed. It's like I'm riding with Batman or something. I'm rambling, aren't I? More than usual, I mean. Sorry, not many of us have vehicles, you know. It's not like in the movies. What can I say? I'm impressed. It's like I'm riding with Batman or something. I'm rambling, aren't I? More than usual, I mean. Sorry. Not many of us have vehicles, you know. It's not like in the movies. What can I say? I'm impressed. It's like I'm riding with Batman or something. With all I've been through recently, I deserve this. I mean, what's the point of being Spider-Man if you can't enjoy it? Web swinging, wall crawling? All of New York your own personal playground? What could possibly... And that didn't last long. Okay. With all I've been going through recently, I deserve this. I mean, what's the point of being Spider-Man if you can't enjoy it? 
web-swinging, wall-crawling, all of New York your own personal playground? I mean, what could possibly... And that didn't last long. I want you to arrest me. Hi, Lamont. Hi, Detective Lamont. Arrest me, okay? Take me in. So I woke up this morning in a two-buck squat out in... In a two-buck squat. And my aunt is dying. And my wife is terrified and I'm forcing her to live in a freaking Motel 11 teen. And I'm sick of it. I woke up sick and ashamed and embarrassed that this is what I've done to my family. She's dying, Lamont. And I'm hiding like an animal. She's dying and she's still protecting me. And I know I'll feel different this afternoon, or tonight, or tomorrow, but I swear to God, right now the idea that I've become a man that forces his family to hide, to protect him, makes me sick. I want you to take me in. And I want total immunity for my family. My whole life, these women. What I've put them through. I want to be there for them for a change. How much more can we take? You don't know what they've had to endure. What all the women in my life have had to do to survive. I keep waiting to wake up, Lamont. I'm a grown man. This is no way to live. Well, can't you, like... Can't you just call S.H.I.E.L.D. or something, make an anonymous call, and then bring me in or whatever? And here's another thing. When I designed this suit, why the heck didn't I design it with pockets? Anything I carry, I gotta carry it in a web pouch. The Fantastic Four have pockets in their uniforms. Reed Richards alone are huge. Eh, but that's because he has to carry trans-dimensional mega doodads and whirly doos in them. Or maybe he's just real happy to see Sue. Of course, if I had pockets, stuff would fall out of them every time I did this. Okay, so maybe I could have pockets with zippers. Maybe Velcro. Yeah, that'd work. I'd be creeping up behind somebody and have to get something out. Zip? What's that smear on the wall, Mommy? Oh, that used to be Spider-Man, honey. What killed him? A zipper. Some said Velcro, but the Daily Bugle said it was a zipper, and I believe the Bugle. Wow, he must have been real stupid, huh? Yes, honey, he was. <sighs> Why the heck am I even talking about pockets anyway? Because it's easier than thinking about my life lately? And why should that bother you, Peter? Oh, no reason. The others might have decided that you were too much to handle. But Spider-Man's no quitter. And maybe this is the way it should be. Just me, alone against the four of you. After all, I'm the one who stopped you before. And I'm the one who's gonna put you away again. The others might have decided that you were too much to handle. But Spider-Man is no quitter. And maybe this is the way it should be. Just me. Alone against the four of you. After all, I'm the one who stopped you before. And I'm the one who's gonna put you away again. The two people in all the world who have been kindest to me. I can't fail again. It can't happen a second time. I won't let it. I won't. No matter what the odds, no matter what the cost, I'll get that serum to Aunt May. And maybe then I, I'll no longer be haunted by the memory of Uncle Ben. But you can be a hairy hero. Come with me. But you can be a hairy hero. Come with me. But you, my friend, Harambe, can be a hairy hero. Come with me. But you can be a hairy hero. Come with me. What the hell? Do. I hate to break it to you, but your eyes are the least of your problems. First of all, alt green jumpsuit, I got two words for you. Ease fashion emergency. We get you on there, let them fix you up with a look that says, sure. I may be a homicidal maniac who just tried to take over a nuclear power plant on the shores of the most populated city in the country, but I have style, all on my own. Why, I'm your friendly neighborhood spider... Alrighty then. He broke my webbing. Great. I didn't know it could break. Maybe I didn't mix the batch the way it's supposed to. This is... 
Spider-Man slash Deadpool is the story of a sensitive, yet firm genius, me, trying to help a deranged lunatic use his powers for good, and that would be you. Say your line, Wade. It's true. I am deranged, but this is so boring. Oh my god, you're such a piece of... Okay, fine. I'll tell you what Spider-Man slash Deadpool is really about. It's the epic battle over a throne. I... I'm the king, and Spider-Man is my number two. Oh, why are you like this? You know nothing, Jon Snow. You're the literal worst. Bro, do you know how much these panels cost? Come on. It's Valentine's Day, and I don't feel much like being anybody's Valentine. But as odd as it might seem, I find myself wanting to talk to you. I remember the first time. How you sent me a valentine that wasn't signed. He just drew in one of those happy faces. I asked once why you sent me all those cards. And you told me you had to get my attention somehow. Where could my head have been where I wasn't paying attention to you? What was it that my Uncle Ben used to say? Youth is wasted on the wrong people. I know you'll never hear this. But someday there may be someone who should know about you. Us. Your name was Gwen Stacy. Mine is Peter Parker. This is the story of how we fell in love. Or, more appropriately, how we almost didn't fall in love. So it's Valentine's Day and there's a place I stop by once a year. Nobody knows. I don't make a big deal out of it. It's about remembering someone who was so important to me, I was going to spend the rest of my life with her. I didn't know that meant she would only get to spend the rest of her life with me. There's nothing I can do about it, and I've come to accept that. But when you lose someone you love, everyone tells you to pick up and move on. Don't dwell on the past. It's what she would want, and that makes me smile. Like I would ever want to forget about you. The way your hair would fall across your face. The way you sipped your soda. Hello, Gwen. My funny Valentine. I was just a young, unthinking teenager when I first became Spider-Man. But the years have a way of slipping by, of changing the world about us. And every boy, sooner or later, must put away his toys and become a man. For as long as I can remember, those two were my mother and father. They raised me, taught me everything I know. Everything I am, I owe to them. Maybe my real parents were dead, but never once did I feel lonely or that I was missing anything. They gave me all the love any real parents could give. Heck, they were my parents. But because of one selfish moment, because I refused to stop that murdering burglar when he ran past me, Uncle Ben was killed. And now... But I do know people are dying, and our country's name and ideology are tied to it. I'm going to go. I need to see it for myself, to understand it beyond news reports and government briefings. Then... then what do I do? I have power. Shouldn't I be... shouldn't I have a responsibility to go? I don't know. Son... Responsibility doesn't mean you're at the whims of the world. We all have our own journey, and this is mine. You do good work here. I see that every day. Responsibility is about a lot of things, but first and foremost, it's about selflessness and sacrifice. And seeing you throw yourself in a dangerous way, it's clear. You understand both those things. And let your heart guide you, and I'll see you soon. Uh, I... Thanks, Cap. I'll see you soon. Okay, that's all so far. I think I did well for the most part. And yeah, there were some highs and lows in terms of quality here and there. I mean, I did do these over the course of like two different weeks with varying degrees of success, and two different mics. But if you really did enjoy these, please remember to subscribe 
and maybe send me some submissions of stuff you'd like to see me voice on Twitter. Anyway, thank you for tuning in, and good night.